There has been so many people that I think, for whatever reason, want to trumpet the fact that they think Brian Koberger is innocent. And I did a poll today on my channel. Where I oh, he did a poll. Good job, Tyler. Happy uh, Sunday, everybody. April 30th, 2023. So we're going to uh, be seeing what uh, Tyler's got for us today. Um, the title is Maddie's Boyfriend Speaks and Brian Koberger Updates. As you guys know, I've been following this case as well the whole way. So uh, let's see what he's got today. Here we go. I just went and asked how many people think Brian Koberger is innocent, how many people think he's guilty. If the trial was today, would it be a guilty verdict or a not guilty verdict? And there's so many people who want to fight with me about, we don't know this, we don't know that. I'm like, I said, if, if, if 80% of people, if the trial was today, think it's going to be a guilty verdict, 20% say not guilty verdict. I think it's an interesting uh, conversation. I think that's probably about right. Um, you know, most of us think he's guilty, even at this point. Um, even though there hasn't been a trial yet. But, uh, you know, I just think there's already too much evidence. Uh, I mean, just the DNA alone, um, combined with all the other facts. Um, and I'm sure, I'm sure there's a lot more that we're, you know, that's gonna come out against him. And, uh, if there was truly exculpatory evidence that would free him, I'm sure um, law enforcement would have already they already known about it the first day when they took Beth uh, Bethany's statement. Okay, and uh, they're still totally confident that Brian's a guy, so I am confident as well. As, along with law enforcement. But one of the things that seems to be happening pretty prevalently is in the comments section on these videos the past couple of times that I've made videos, in fact. And, and the FBI is involved in this case, right, too. So, they've, I mean, they've got a 90, what, 95% conviction rate, you know. I know they're not... And they're not the actual ones trying this case, but they, they, they've been helping out. I even had to take one of them down because it was getting so disgusting and nasty in the comment section that people uh, that uh, more than any other side are on Brian Koberger's side are just downright disrespectful. And it's okay if you have an opinion. I'm okay if you say, you know what, I think it's probably going to be not guilty because I don't think this piece of evidence will hold up or we don't know this or we don't know that. Totally fine with that. But when you start making it personal. Well, Tyler, there's an easy way to fix that. Let me help you. So as a content creator, you have an option to, you know, uh, let all the comments through, let some of them through, or uh, you have to, there's an option to review all of the comments. Now, I know, um, you know, with the algorithm, YouTube algorithm, I'm sure the comments, may, uh, the more the comments, right, the uh, easier it is for people to find your channel with the algorithm, I'm sure. But, uh, you know, for me, I don't let every comment come through. I like to check them just for this reason, because uh, there's there is some people that have no lives that just sit on here and like to troll other people, you know, and YouTube creators. And, uh, you know, and, and just say dumbass things that uh, they'll never have to experience because they're never gonna be in front of a camera, right? And, uh, and they're anonymous, basically. So, uh, you know, Tyler just, uh, Hit the hit the button. Turn off. Uh, don't allow all the comments, right? And your problem solved. Is when it becomes a very difficult problem uh, for.
for not just me, but just society in general. And so we don't allow that. And it just seems to me the people who think, not all, some people who think Brian Koberger is not guilty, maybe have valid reasons and have good conversations about it. Uh, but many, many, many people on that side have left some pretty nasty comments on my YouTube channel. And so bad on one of the videos, we had to take it down. So uh, just trying to say, please remain peaceful in the comments section. Uh, but I do want to give a couple updates. Uh, this is a video we've actually watched that video you would... before, but I thought I'd play this little snippet again. It's just uh, Ethan's parents talking about this thing that Ethan did the day that he actually uh, died. Okay, so we got Ethan Chapin's parents talking about something Ethan did on the day he actually died. Oops. People like that think you wish you could be like, hey, Morgan Paul, and you, let me tell you how much you've touched our lives by that. He was so excited to send me that song on that day. It's people like... I just feel like we can tell Ethan's parents are amazing people. Ethan Chapin, obviously... 20 years old was one of four college students killed in an off-campus home in Moscow, Idaho. He was a triplet. There you see him with his brother and his sister as well as his parents. He see, and, and that affects, that's going to, I mean, Ethan's death's going to affect all their lives. Along with, you know, all the family and friends of all the other victims, right? So, uh, yeah, Koberger did a lot of damage here. Allegedly, Koberger. Hello, and welcome Hello. to your latest weather update from the Met Office. We'll see you next. Uh, sorry. Uh, grieving mom Stacy Chapum told Fox News G Digital that she and her husband Jim had attended a parents' weekend at the university on November 6th, just a week before Ethan was killed. Jim said he hugged Ethan and said to be safe, which was their final conversation. The parents were called. How they and Ethan and other siblings spent two months together after the, the murder. She said, we just talked it out, talked and told stories and cried. The parents revealed that the murder. Well, that's a good thing. See, they talked about, uh, they talked it out, right? Um, got everything they needed to get out of their heads out, right? Uh, you know, sometimes it's not good to just brush it away and uh, not talk about someone dying. Uh, because it does affect everybody, uh, and it affects everybody differently, right? So, uh, yeah, at least I, that's how I feel about it. I have lost uh, people close to me, but uh, some people in my family don't want to talk about it, and they think, uh, oh, don't talk about it and just, uh, you, sh you should be fine. Uh, well, I don't think that's the right approach. But to each their own, right? Murders had seen them plunged into the depths of hell and they got the worst curveball. Stacy recalled on one occasion that she broke down while walking and thought passersby would call 911 on her. The mom described her Mother's Day, which falls on May 14th this year, as the next milestone. A day she's branded as tough. She's reminisced on how Ethan sent her a song that the singer Morgan Wallen had penned for his own mother last year. And that is a great song, actually. I really like that song that Morgan Wallen made for his mom. If you guys haven't heard it, you should definitely listen to it. And it's heartbreaking to me to see Ethan Chapin's mom speaking out like this. We need to surround this family with prayer. And it's one of the most important things that I think we can do is we're uh, continuing to stay interested in this case. It's around the people with prayer who need prayer. It's shocking to me, as I said in the last video, we need to pray for Bethany, which I think we still need to pray for Bethany. The number of people who were disgusted by that because they think she's some sort of accomplice. I find that sickening and disrespectful that you would say that about her personally. That's my opinion. And we do need to pray for her. I feel like we do need to pray for her. I haven't really heard anybody talking about Bethany as an accomplice. Um, I have heard, you know, Dylan. <clears throat> you know, but nobody has been really talking about Bethany until the last couple of weeks when, she, when uh, you know, all this stuff about her not, you know, 
having to go to the pretrial hearing and her not wanting to go. Yeah, you know, no until that until then nobody was talking about Bethany. Everybody assumed she was asleep and you know, on the first floor and had nothing to do with it. That was the, uh, you know, major, major, the most consensus that was done on my channel. Um, I know a lot of you, including me, still, I mean, I still think it's suspicious that Dylan waited that long uh, to call 911 or, or anybody, especially after seeing Koberger face to face, right? Um, but I think... Uh, more of us just want clarification on exactly why, right? Um, but uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think Bethany uh, was an accomplice in any way. But we do know now that she did hear and see things, right? I mean, there was there was one thing out there that said that Bethany saw a naked man running out the sliding door. Um, but I don't think that, that was true. I think that was uh, just something that I saw that uh, that's why I didn't do a video on it. Uh, but, you know who, know, who knows? We won't know exactly what Bethany heard and saw until trial or Brian pleads guilty, right? Many of you think if she's an accomplice, you have absolutely nothing to root that in. There's not even one iota of a fragment of information that could point to that. So, yeah, I mean, that's that is true, right? Uh, we don't know what Bethany said to the police. All we know is she did make a statement uh, to the police when they came over that day. I find it to be way out of line. Uh, here's an article that actually says what Bethany Funk told police about the Brian Koberger murder case. The probable cause affidavit in the Idaho murder was released. Oops. Detailing what led police to arrest Brian Koberger, here's what it reveals about Koberger and the case. DNA evidence and cell phone ping technology led police to Koberger Surviving roommate DM said she woke up around 4 a.m. on November 13th and thought she heard Kaylee Consalves say there's someone here. Shortly after, DM thought she heard crying and what sounded like... All right, pause right there. So if you hear your roommate and friend, right, say, which Kaylee would have been on the, on a floor above her, right, say, I think there's somebody here and it sounds like crying. Why wouldn't you see if she's okay, though, right? Or at least text her or just walk up the stairs, right? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it just seems a little strange. The man saying, it's okay, I'm going to help you. A month later, opened the door and a masked man walked past her. That's what it says on the probable cause affidavit. She said she did not recognize him. DNA was... Well, who knows? Maybe that was normal, right? Uh, but to see random people in the house, because it was was kind of a party house, but uh, with a mask on, right? Uh, that, that can't be normal. It's found on a knife sheath, left on a bed at the crime scene, which investigated... And like I said before, there had to be screaming. I mean, one person come in and said, oh, you can get stabbed and not make any noise. Well, okay, I'll give you, I'll give you that. But not four people, okay? <laughs> not four people. Maybe one of them didn't make any noise. I'll, okay, I can, I can, I can go with that. Let's say, I'll, I'll even give you Two of them did not, maybe two of them were totally silent, okay? But we know f for a fact, at least two of these victims, uh, Kaylee and 
Well, no, three. Kathy, K, uh, Kaylee, Ethan, and Xana at least all had defensive wounds on them. So, they're going to be making noise. When they get stabbed, they're going to be screaming. They're going to be yelling, okay? Uh, it's just it's just a fact, okay? You're not going to go silently to your death while getting stabbed, okay? Um... Especially, I can I keep reiterating this. Look up where Kaylee was stabbed at, okay? I mean, she's going to make some noise. And don't say she's not. Uh, and, until you look up and know where she was stabbed at, how many times, and... Um, and just, yeah, just look that up. I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh... There, there's, there was yelling and screaming. I have no doubt about that. Investigators matched using Koberger's family DNA all the way back to Koberger. And you know, if you comment, it's fine to comment and say that you don't think there's any screaming, but uh, I'm not gonna believe it. But uh, please tell me, you know, tell me why you think that four people, one, two, three, four can be stabbed to death and not make a sound. Not, it's possible to get stabbed to death, uh, one person. I wanna know why you think four people that had defensive wounds on them uh, didn't make any noise. And how you think that's possible. It's not possible, in my opinion. Koberger's cell phone was in the area of the crime. On at least 12 occasions. And you don't need to be a uh, an expert to know that, right? Just go to the, some of these uh, gore uh, channels and, and actually watch someone uh, be stabbed. See if they're silent or not. Then come back and comment. Occasions before the murder took place. So he's been there at least 12 times. It's consistent with the footage of his white Hyundai Elantra. Koberger was working towards a PhD in criminology at Washington State University, which is just 10 minutes away from Moscow, Idaho. He had previously applied for an internship at the police department and posted a Reddit survey looking to understand the influence of emotions and psychological traits and decision making when committing a crime. Bethany Funk, the roommate of the Idaho murder victims, previously spoke with police about the case. And she's now expected to meet with Brian Koberger's legal team in the coming weeks. I think that's great that she's doing that. If she has heard anything or said anything, she needs to say that out loud. Many people who watched my previous videos were under the assumption that I was saying that Bethany Funk shouldn't have to testify at trial. That is not at all what I was saying. I felt like the preliminary hearing, if you look at the precedents around the entire nation, when it comes to preliminary hearings, don't involve eyewitnesses or material witnesses in the case. They would use police statements and police to be witnesses. And it's not a mini trial in itself. It's just... A Wednesday, lawyers... Uh, sorry, Tyler. Lawyers for Funk filed a court document agreeing to sit down for an interview with Koberger's defense team. Okay, so Funk is going to sit down with uh, Koberger's, with Ann Taylor and them, right? Uh, the agreement by Funk came shortly after Koberger's defense team attempted to force her to testify in a preliminary trial. Claiming that she had exculpatory evidence, uh, Koberger, uh, okay. Is there enough information to send this to court? It's going to be a great compromise so that she can share information. Uh, I don't know what that is. They haven't alluded to what that exculpatory information is. Yeah, like, it could, it's probably something minor, right? Um, or just... Uh, it's not going to get Koberger off, um, in my opinion. It's, uh, to me, I just think it's something uh, not important, basically. Um, who knows, though? Maybe maybe it could be something um, that gets him off. What I mean, but uh, 
I think we would have known something about that by now. I think that law enforcement and the prosecution will, already knows what it is, uh, and they would be uh, scrambling, right? Um, something, we would be hearing something. We know there's there's leaks, you know, that, that was leaking stuff out to, to um, News Nation and Banfield, right? So if there was really exculpatory evidence of that to that magnitude, okay, um, I'm sure somebody would have leaked it out for some money, okay? At least that's what I'm thinking. Every major pundit that we heard about opining on this case is saying that's just the you know that's just the hail mary that his defense team is throwing. Because they don't have anything else. Uh, I like. That's basically what I'm saying. I like that Jennifer Koffendoffer uh, wrote this tweet. She said, "Does anyone feel like, with all the legal wrangling and recent Brian Koberger supporter throng, that the victims are being forgotten? Maybe it's just me, but below is what this case is all about." And she puts. Okay. Pause. No. No. I don't think the victims are forgot are being forgotten in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I think that's ridiculous. I think um, we're just trying to get all the facts because we don't know all the facts and we're curious. Um, you know, we can't just. What are we supposed to do? Just talk about. Just talk about how they died every day, right? We can't do that. You know. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. How are we supposed to do that? Um, of course, we remember the four victims of this tragic case. I, of course. Um, but I would rather see uh, justice for them. And, uh, and I want this, this killer um, to be put in prison for the rest of his life. Or... Stand in front of the firing squad, right? But, uh, yeah. No, I, uh, nobody forgetting about the four victims, though. A picture of Jake on there, and she put on there. A coffin diaper. I mean, what? Until you put this tweet out, uh, we haven't heard you, because uh, you're on new, um, News Nation or, or what, it, or Law and Crime Network. Um, almost every day, right? We haven't heard you uh, talk, just talk about the uh, the victims. So st stop it with that. And Tyler, you stop it with that too. Trying to uh, play your, your uh, Christian card or whatever you got going on here. But you all you've been doing is Koberger, Koberger, Koberger every day too. I mean, so stop it, fella. Jake's message. No words can describe the emotions I'm going through at this time. I miss you so, so, so much. I will forever cherish the adventures that we got to experience together more than you will ever know. I love you. Like, pause. Like, Tyler, you wouldn't be reading this if you weren't uh, reading this off of co what Coffindoffer said, okay? This isn't you saying this. And so you wouldn't have been bringing the victims up, you know? You wouldn't have been talking about the victims if uh, if Koffendorfer hadn't tweeted that, okay? So don't give me that bullshit. Be more than anything, Maddie. Never had I ever met a person so unbelievably beautiful inside and out. You lift up every place you went with your smile and your beauty. The love that you showed me is something that I have never experienced before. And I appreciate what we had so much. All right. All Let's right, not okay. forget what this case is. Sent lives that well. Babe. All right. Yeah. So, uh, I'm not like a uh, feller. Uh, I'm not trying to play this big Christian, uh, you know. But, uh, yeah. Let's remember the, the victims. Kaylee, Maddie, Ethan, and Zana. Okay. Um, let's take a moment of silence. Happy now, Fowler?
Spiritual Crime King, out.